Okay, remember our list of important Maclaurin series, the list of seven? We have the geometric series, the geometric series derivative, the geometric series integral. Uh, here I have it as the um, positive log of 1 minus x, so the negative sign has been put to the right-hand side. And then we have the arctan of x, and all of these came from section 10.7 which is the introduction to power series. Everything is coming from the original geometric series. And then when we switched into the Taylor series, we then developed the series for e to the x and sine x and cosine x. And so now we want to be able to see what we can do with these. What's the purpose of this? Why do we do this? And that's in section 10.9 and 10.10. So um, if you have something that is a list on this list here, then what you can do is use it in many different applications. And we're going to discover um, two or three in this series of videos. First up, you can use a power series to evaluate a limit. Here's a limit that x is going to 0. We have sine of x minus x plus x cubed over 6. And that whole thing is divided by x to the fifth. Now, if we were to do, you know, plug in the 0, we'd see that the numerator goes to 0 and the denominator goes to 0 and we require L'Hopital's rule. It turns out it's going to take five iterations of L'Hopital's rule to get this question when instead what we can do is take the power series for sine of x not the whole series just the first few terms replace that sine of x with its power series so we have x minus x cubed over 3 plus x fifth over 5 minus x seventh over 7 and there's more terms but We'll stop right there. And so that is replacing the sine of x. Everything else stays the same. There's still a minus x uh, plus x cubed over 6 in the numerator. And there's still an x fifth in the denominator. Now by subbing this in, what this does for us is it allows us to get some cancellation. We have the x from the sine of x and the x from the part that's after that. We're going to have those two parts cancel. And then with the x cubes. We have x cubed over 6, you know, 3 factorial 6 with a negative on it, and there it is with a plus. And so when that's done, nothing is left, to, nothing else can cancel, and so we'll have the following. And I put in a few more terms, uh, x 9th over 9, x 11th over 11, and it still alternates inside. Now, this limit is x going to 0. Usually we have limit as x goes to infinity, we care about the highest degree terms, um, in this situation, what we care about is the lowest degree terms. We have these polynomials that have that go on forever and never terminate. And we want to be able to figure out what happens as x goes to 0. So what we're going to do is algebraically simplify this. And we're going to do that by accomplishing the feat of looking at all of these terms and dividing each of these guys by x to the fifth. And so we'll have um, the x to the fifth basically canceling out in the first one. And then when it comes to the others, they'll get cancellation, but there'll still be an x around. We'll have x to the second and x to the fourth and x to the sixth and so on. And higher order terms, the dot, dot, dot is representing higher order terms that will be um, terms of x to some power, a higher power than what you already have. And remember, you're doing the limit as x goes to 0. All of these terms that have x in them then are going to go away. Each of them will go to 0, leaving us with just the first term, which is 1 over 5 factorial, which is 1 over 120. Okay, so look for one of the guys that are on the list of 7. Replace that function with its power series representation, and then cancel and execute the limit. So. That's one example of a use of a Taylor series. 
Now let's see another. We can use a power series to find the sum of a series. Before, what we had said was that, well, if you're asked to find the sum of a series, then it's going to come from having it be a geometric. Um, if you're asked to find the sum, we said that, well, it needs to be geometric or telescoping. Well, now we're going to add to this list, on top of being ge geometric or possibly being telescoping, what we can do is we can have one of the list of our seven known Maclaurin series, and we can have um, a number, we have to re recognize what number it is, um, plugged in, replacing x. in the Maclaurin series in our list of seven known Maclaurin series. Here's an example. We have 1 plus pi plus pi squared over 2 factorial, pi cubed over 3 factorial, and pi fourth over 4 factorial, and the pattern continues. And so what we have to notice is that um, we have every factorial, every factorial there, and it's not alternating. And so this is going to be then the fact that there's a number that's plugged in to one of our series. It's going to be e to the x's power series with pi plugged in to replace x. So then when it comes time to the summation, we can take the power series and plug a pi in in replace of x. And even in the function, what we're going to do is plug a pi into that. We take it to the left-hand side, we take the right-hand side and plug in this pi. So the answer to this question is that this series will have a sum of e to the pi. Okay, next up, we have 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh. And what we recognize is that there are no factorials. It does alternate, but um, the, the new, only the odd terms are present. And that's going to come from um, the fact that we're looking at arctan. We have um, arctan's power series from the list of seven, and it looks like one has replaced the x. So then we do it, we have the summation, replace the x with the one, and then also we're going to um, put in to the function, replace the x with the one. So we have the arctan of one. Now remember what this says arctan of one is asking the following question. The tangent of what will equal 1? And your response, that angle is your response. And so the tangent of what angle equals 1, that angle is pi over 4. Okay, and let's do one more. This one's a little more difficult. Where we see that we have the odd powers of pi. We have the odd factorials. It looks like it's alternating. But there's some other numbers down here. There's an 8 and a 32 and a 132. And so there's a 2 down underneath the first one. And so what we're going to do then is isolate those numbers and talk about the part that we do recognize. The fact that we have alternating and the factorials and the odds. It's got to be sine x. So then what's, once you figure out what the function is, then you can, if you can find out if there's an x term in there, then your job is to figure out, well, what replaced that x term? And the easiest way is to look at the beginning of this. It is the pi over 2 that replaced the x term. And make sure then, for the rest of it, that that pattern has been followed. You know, when you cube 2, you get 8. And when you take when you take um, 2 to the 5, you get 32. And 2 to the 7, you get 128. And so, yes, this is going to be the sine power series with the pi over 2 plugged in to replace the x. If you want the summation form, it would look like that. But it's the sine of pi over 2. And so this is a fancy way of saying that all of these numbers, infinitely many of them, will add up to the number 1, because that's what the sine of pi over 2 is. So when asked to find the sum of a series, there's three different situations you could find yourself in. Earlier in the chapter, we looked at geometric series and a telescoping series. And now that we know Taylor series, we can take um, one of our known Taylor series and find what has been plugged in to replace x and then plug that into the function.